Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the Plastic Origins training. Today we are going to talk about this participatory science project uh, that maps plastic pollution uh, in rivers and encourages local decision makers to take action. This is a project uh, that has been developed within the Surfrider Foundation Europe Association. Uh, we are three full-time employees working uh, on this project today. Antoine, Jennifer and Océane. So I am Océane, nice to meet you. Uh, many volunteers uh, have worked and are still working hard also on this project. I'm going to talk about half an hour uh, to present the project and how the application works uh, so that you can download it and go out into the field uh, to help us collecting data. So let's start about uh, some information uh, with uh, Thofrider. So you may know that Surfrider is an NGO that has been working uh, since 1990 to protect the oceans, the aquatic environments, the coastline, and uh, the users of these environments. Uh, the association works on three main uh, themes, water quality and user health, aquatic litter and coastal development, and also climate change. Surfrider is implementing three levels of action on these three th thematics, so education and awareness, political advocacy and scientific and legal expertise. Today, we are going to focus on uh, one of the thematics, so about marine litter, uh, in which the Plastic Origin Project uh, is involved. So let's uh, set some context uh, on the issue of plastic pollution first. So today, more than 10 million tons of plastic waste are generated every year, and 80% of this waste ends up in landfills or in nature. As you know, plastic uh, is a threat to marine biodiversity, ecosystem, beaches and coastlines. And the evidence today is that 80% of the plastic that you find on beaches and in the oceans actually comes from inland and is carried by river or blown by the wind. So rivers has been identified as a major source of introduction of litter items entering the ocean and the seas from inland and from uh, the rivers. That's why there is a, a, an urgent need to act upstream to stop plastic pollution from source. And this is why Surfrider decided to launch uh, this project a few years ago, focusing on aquatic ecosystems upstream uh, from ocean and beaches. So let's have a, a quick look on the history of the project. So in 2013, a very high flood uh, washed out uh, the Bosens landfill. Uh, which is located uh, in the, near the Gave de Pau uh, in the southwest of France. So all the waste from the landfill uh, that was uh, washed away by this flood uh, ended up along the Gave de Pau River. This enormous pollution uh, was very remarkable at that time. So Surfrider uh, was therefore interesting in uh, analyzing macro waste pollution in the river, as it was not being monitored very much at the time. So different techniques uh, were tested and uh, used to analyze the amount of uh, litter present in the river uh, and try to categorize uh, the type of litter. Um, so they try to use nets to collect samples directly from the river, but also floating bones or using existing uh, dams uh, to, to try to estimate this pollution. Uh, litter was also uh, collected uh, on the on the riverbanks and categorized and count uh, by um, by sort of plastic. Uh, all this study was carried out uh, for a few years, uh, and a lot of data um, came from this study. So. Um, we have now a good knowledge and a good overview of the category of litter that uh, we can find on river and uh, on the banks. Uh, however, uh, we realized that it, this whole process was too slow and required a lot of time and labor to go into the field, collect litter items, collect data and analyze this data. So the need that emerged from these initial studies and findings was to obtain a spatial temporal vision of the level of microplastic pollution uh, in rivers. The question uh, that was raised at this moment was therefore how to do better uh, than these methodologies on field. Um, uh, so 
we imagined that we could develop a methodology that is reliable, inexpensive, fast, uh, re reproducible, uh, so that we could obtain uh, robust data uh, all around Europe to compare pollution over time and to identify uh, the most affected areas. So the idea uh, that emerged was to use participatory science. So participatory science um, is a way of collecting data or obtaining scientific information on the field, thanks to the involvement of citizens. And also uh, to use um, digital tools uh, to collect data on river pollution by dynamically reporting the presence of litter items washed up on the banks along sections of rivers. So the indicator uh, developed and used in the framework of this project is what we call the number of litter items observed per kilometer of riverbank. It is a dynamic indicator for, for, to monitor uh, from a point A to a point B on a water course uh, in order to have a global spatial temporal vision of the pollution. So, so Frider has developed a, a mobile application, which is called Plastic Origins. Um, it's, uh, for, you, can, you can download it for free and it's available for Android phones and iOS phones that you can download now if you want. And uh, how does uh, this application work? So first of all, anyone that wants to get involved in the project and that wants to collect data about plastic pollution in rivers um, need to create an account. Uh, why do we have to create an account? Um, it allows us to keep the track of the data and to prevent what we call spam data to enter our database. Uh, registration is very simple. You just need to enter your first name, last name, year of birth, email address and create a password. Then you can sim simply log in uh, from the application. So let's have a look on how this uh, application works. So what you can do uh, with this application is to record a trace. So what is a trace? Uh, a trace um, is when you report litter items on the bank along a stretch of river, so for uh, several hundreds of meters or some kilometers. Um, so if you decide to go out in the field, uh, whether it's on foot along a riverbank or on the water in a watercraft such as a kayak, canoe, or what anyone, any kind of um, of um, of boat that you that you want, uh, you will have to observe the litter items um, in the water and on the riverbank along this stretch of river. So you can start uh, a follow up uh, on the on page of the application uh, by by clicking on a button. Uh, so you click on uh, create a new tr a new trace. And then uh, various tips, as you can see here, uh, will be presented to you. Uh, it's a good. It's always good to read them and to keep the, the process in mind. Um, the first uh, tip uh, is to choose between one of the two riverbanks, and you will only focus on one of the riverbanks over the several hundred meters. Um, in fact, the monitoring is only is only done uh, this way because when you are in the middle of a river, you cannot look at the litter on both the left and the right banks. So just to clarify, uh, if you are not comfortable with the terms left bank and right bank, the right bank is the one that um, is located on your right when you look in the direction of the water flow and the opposite for the left bank. Uh, the second tips uh, also uh, remember that uh, there are two modes of using the application, a manual mode and an automatic mode. I'll come back to these details uh, later. And the third tip uh, gives you a guideline about one of the category of the litter items, but we will come back to this one uh, later as well. So once you have these tips displayed, uh, you will need to indicate the tracking methods that you will use. So are you on the water in a kayak or in a canoe? Uh, are you on foot along a riverbank? The other category could be an inflatable boat, standard paddle, a small boat or rafting or whatever. And you will always be able to specify it in a, in a comment if you want. Um, you will also have to indicate which bank you will explore. So you have uh, here the, the small image uh, with the hours uh, on the water to, to help you to identify on which bank uh, you are and which one to explore. Uh, and you will have to choose the tracking mode also, so manual or automatic. 
So I will start by presenting the manual mode, which is the most uh, recommended mode uh, at the moment, uh, when there is uh, little uh, little items and that is um, quite easy to observe and to take your time on the water to observe the, the little items. So this is the screen that will be displayed uh, for tracking uh, in the manual mode. So from the moment you start tracking, you should immediately start observing and counting litter. And why do you need to, to do this? It's because the GPS coordinates uh, of your position are taken into account as soon as the tracking um, is started. So it considers that you already started to count the litter items. So that's very important that as long as you launch the, the counting, um, you start observing the litter items. Uh, on the top left screen, uh, you can see your GPS uh, location that are recorded. Um, on the on phones, the GPS position is recorded even when you have no mobile network or internet, and even when uh, you are in airplane mode. So you can be on a river in the middle of nowhere without a network and still be able to track. Uh, then at the top right uh, is the counter of identified litter. And in the middle, there are the eight buttons of the eight identified categories of litter items. Uh, so how do, does it work? So imagine you are on the water or at the edge of uh, the water on the riverbanks. And as soon as you pass a litter item, you must report it by clicking on the button corresponding to it, its categories because your GPS coordinates will count for the GPS coordinate of the reported litter. I will go into more detail about the categories later on. Uh, but let's see about how to stop the recording. So uh, as soon as you stop counting the litter, uh, you need to stop recording. Um, so this is the left red button. Uh, and one last point about uh, this screen. Um, there is a button on the bottom right of the screen, which allows you to open the camera of your phone and take a picture of a litter item. Uh, these photos uh, uh, will feed uh, a database of image uh, that will drive the automatic litter detection algorithm using artificial intelligence, which is used for the second plastic regions tracking mode, and I will explain uh, it uh, a bit later. So taking a photo is a bonus in tracking, but it doesn't replace a click on a button uh, or a litter item report. So if you see a bottle, for example, and you think you have time to take a photo of it, you must first report it as a litter item in the tracker and then um, take a picture of it if you have time. So well, here are the categories uh, of litter items that you will find on the manual modes. So um, uh, common household items like, that you can see here uh, are items that uh, could be found at home or that is not packaging, so it can be a shoe, a face mask, a sponge, a toy, or share. Uh, fragments are non-identifiable litter items, often pieces of plastic bags, pieces of plastic tops. Um, so it's everything that it's, looks like a litter item that you can't identify in another category. And you can click on 10 fragments and when there are too many fragments in one place. So you count in sets of 10. Um, fishing and hunting waste can be a um, cartridge from a gun or fishing nets. Agricultural litter can be a tarpaulin. Uh, industrial or construction waste is anything you might have found uh, on a building site. So tape, pieces of um, blocks, metal parts. Uh, for food packaging, this is anything that can be like pots, trays, fast food packaging, bags. Um, and for the bottle category, it includes all the liquid, liquid containers, so bottles, cartons, and cans. So here are all the categories uh, that you can specify. Uh, now we are going to switch to the automatic mode, uh, which is a mode that uses artificial intelligence technology. So here, instead of uh, manually reporting the presence of litter by clicking on buttons on the phone, um, you, sim you simply fill uh, the banks uh, from a boat with your phone. So the principle, as you can see here on the small uh, animation, um, so you film uh, the left or the right bank uh, in landscape formats for one or three minutes, um, as you can see here on the animation. And an automatic detection algorithm with, will automatically identify and count litter from the video. 
Uh, for both tracking methods, uh, it is recommended that when you are in a kayak type boat uh, and you are like two people, the person in the back paddles uh, and steers the boat while the person in front of uh, does the tracking methods. It is also recommended that you use either a waterproof phone case or a waterproof pouch uh, when you are on the water to secure your, your equipment. So how does it work? Here is a small animation. Uh, the artificial intelligence will automatically detect litter in the water and on the banks on the basis of the video you have made in automatic mode. So as you can see here, uh, the detection algorithm is trained uh, thanks to the database of photos that can be taken in addition to the manual reporting uh, of, the, of the application, as we, 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 see, uh, we saw earlier. So once you have uh, completed your monitoring, uh, whether in manual or automatic mode, uh, you will be asked uh, if you want to stop uh, the recording. So you will have to accept to accept it. Uh, you can also add a comment um, in which you can share your experience, but also indicate if you have encountered any problems during the follow up or share any information that you, that you wish to share. And here, very important, uh, your complete uh, follow ups will be stored in your data on your phone uh, on the home page of the application. And until you transfer them, uh, we will not receive them in our database. So it's very important. It's absolutely crucial that once you have completed your follow ups, you transfer them by clicking on the button that's synchronizing. Uh, to do this, you will need to, to have Wi Fi or 4G, 5G uh, connection. Uh, and after having clicked on the, the button, you, you must wait for the appearance of the small gray lean uh, check uh, that validates the, the data transfer. Um, if you did like uh, an error or a bad tracking, you can always delete it by swiping left and not synchronize it. So then uh, we will receive the data and thanks to your GPS coordinates, uh, we will be able to detect automatically on which river you have done your tracking. So you will never need to specify the location or the name of the river on which you are monitoring. It will be recognized automatically thanks to your GPS coordinates. Uh, then uh, the river litter monitoring indicator will be calculated based on your data. So the indicator is the number of litter items per kilometer of riverbank. Um, and the, this data uh, will be displayed in real time on an interacti interactive European map, which, thanks to a color system, we will be able to, to identify the third most uh, polluted rivers that will be in red, the third most um, uh, less polluted rivers that will be in green, etc. Uh, this mapping uh, is currently under development and implementation. This picture is only an example. But all the data that has been collected so far um, is already stored in our database and will be displayed on the map that will uh, arrive in uh, 2022. So it's an ongoing work, but it will soon be effective. Uh, the question is also, what is the point of having this data and uh, having this monitoring uh, methodology? One of the objectives uh, is to have a spatial temporal vision of the pollution of waterways and to analyze the evolution of this pollution over time and uh, after the implementation of solution to reduce it. Uh, this project also provides a robust and reliable database that can be presented for lobbying and regulatory changes at national but also European level. Last but not least, uh, this project allows to propose solutions at a local level uh, to the local authorities and decision makers presenting the territories uh, identified at the most affected uh, uh, territories uh, by the monitoring method. So when the, mon the mapping uh, will be effective and we will have a lot of data all around France and Europe, we will be able to identify the most polluted and the most affected territories and act on these territories uh, in collaboration with local actors. This is really the aim of this project, is to propose solutions to reduce plastic pollution at source. Uh, today, this is done by proposing action sheets uh, that are developed by the team and that allow pollution to be reduced from its source. 
Surfrider will always favor a reduction from source uh, rather than creative methods to prevent pollution from entering the environment. These action sheets are partially available for the moment on the Plastic Origin website and partially in progress. So there are still other action sheets uh, that, are, well, that we have been uh, working on. Uh, for the moment, these sheets concerns, for example, the prevention of litter fresh down the toilets, litter blown away by the wind or illegal damping. Um, there are also sheets on food packaging to encourage deposit system, for example, uh, or special sheets on cigarette butts or agricultural uh, tarpaulins. Uh, these are sheets to guide uh, local actors and communities to drastically reduce the amount of litter that can end up uh, in their ri rivers. So now uh, here are some tips uh, for organizing a plastic origins field trip to collect uh, data on rivers. So um, a brief, uh, a small brief on safety. If you are going kayaking, rafting, or stand-up paddling, always ask um, the water leisure centers for advice uh, if you don't know uh, the, the field very well, so that they can advise you uh, on a place to, to enter the water and a place to exit the water. Uh, it is also ad advisable to equip yourself with safety equipment, such as life jackets and helmets. Basically, try to surround yourself with people that know the terrain or the ledger centers. Always check the weather conditions to avoid high water levels uh, or the consequences of flooding. Um, in France, uh, we have a, waste, a website that is called Vigicru uh, to have information about this kind of uh, weather forecasts. But alternatively, for Europe and also other countries in the world, uh, you can use the application that is called River, River App that provides information uh, on water levels and also kayaking routes uh, in several European countries. Um, some areas are also to be avoided for safety reasons and also for the relevance of the plastic origin monitoring. It's like uh, busy city crossings with highly uh, frequented waterways, uh, especially with the constructed riverbanks and boat traffic. You should also avoid um, rapids uh, for both safety reasons and because it is also more difficult to observe the litter items on the banks uh, when you are in rapids. Uh, dams you should avoid also for ob obvious reasons and also avoid um, uh, going down polluted waters or water that has subject to uh, toxic waste. Something that is very important for us um, within the project, but also for you and to value your voluntary action, uh, is to share your experience uh, so that we can develop the network and the, the plastic origins community. So don't hesitate to take pictures of your on-field study uh, and don't hesitate to use the, the hashtag Plastic Origin and identify Surfrider Europe. Uh, we really need your volunteering because without our volunteers, we can't collect data and uh, we can't act. So it's very important to us and a big thank you to all our volunteers that go on the field. It's thanks to you. Uh, that we can have data and that we can act um, to reduce plastic pollution. Here uh, you may find some useful links um, that uh, you can uh, use to, to have more information. The first link is the link to the Plastic Origin website uh, where you will find all the information you need. Everything is open source and everything is accessible online. Uh, you will also have the link to the Trash Roulette uh, pl platform, which is the image labeling uh, platform that enables the artificial intelligence uh, used in the automatic mode to be trained. Uh, it is on this platform that the photo you can take from the manual mode on the application are found. Uh, you also have here the link to the GitHub of the project. So it is a place uh, where you will find all the open source codes. Um, it is also the network of our developers and volunteers uh, who work on the digital aspects of the application. Um, we are very keen on the open source aspects of the project uh, because the objective is to be able to collect as much data as possible. And this means uh, duplicating the project as much as possible. Um, uh, by being deployed by other associations or other actors. 
Um, you have just attended uh, a recorded training session, but you can also sign up for a video training session with a member of the team. Uh, there is one per month in English, one per month in French, and this can allow us to exchange ideas and answer your question uh, if you need. So don't hesitate to, to register to one of these training. Thank you very much for your attention. Here you can see a small presentation of the member of the Plastic Origin team uh, with our contact if you need uh, to contact us or to ask a question. So do not hesitate and I'm very looking forward to get in touch with you soon. Uh, a big thank you to all our volunteers at Grandefield and our volunteers that help us in the development of the project, um, Plastic Origins. Uh, uh, is what it is thanks to everyone. So thank you, have a great day and goodbye.